Okay, in this lesson, we're going to do a custom MySQL time series query. Now, what is that? All these graphs here are running SQL commands in the background, and they're pulling specific data from the database in order to present the data as these graphs. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one of these from the ground up and write a custom SQL query. So if you have some familiarity with SQL, that would be very useful. Okay, so to understand the background of this to MySQL simple dashboard, what's actually happening is we go back to this image. We have the MySQL data source and it looks at a MySQL server, which is local on my Grafana server. And every 10 minutes, the event scheduler is running a command similar to show global status and it's transforming those results into a table called my2.status with these three columns, variable name, variable value, and time ST. Just to show you those things, okay, I'm on my Grafana server now, and if I just go into MySQL, I can type a command called show global status, like so. And that shows a whole bunch of values. And that's what the collector here is doing, is getting all those values and putting it into this table, my two status. So let's look at the my two status table. Select all from my two dot status and limit, uh, limit 10 example okay so there's some data from the my2 status table I'm just going to order it by date descending so order by time st descending time st stands for time stamp okay so this is the most recent data that's been saved into this table the my2 status if we go back into Grafana here, that's where the underlying data is actually coming from. So every 10 minutes, new data is being saved into there and it can be queried and shown as a graph. So if you have an SQL table somewhere with any data, it doesn't matter how many columns you got or what the column names are, if there are some kind of events being logged and there's a timestamp next to it, you can write a time series query on it. So Basically, we need by minimum the variable value and the timestamp value to create one of these graphs. So let's just create a new a new graph now using the data that we already have being collected for us in the my two status table. So add a panel. Let's add a query. We'll select MySQL. Going to ignore this for now. We're just going to go straight into Edit SQL and look at what's been given to us already. So already this SQL has some problems, and you can see why the error down here. And that's because we haven't really filled in values, because basically this is just a template we can use. So let's look at this table again. Okay, variable name, variable value, and time ST. Okay, so already I can see that I can put time ST in here. So time st the value column as the value in my raw table here it's called variable value so that's the variable value as value and my series column name metric is this one here variable name and this is optional okay so variable value as value variable name as metric from the table name being my two dot status where the time filter equals timestamp now this time filter here is this thing up here that's the time filter so basically what it's going to do it's going to rewrite this sql statement to being select all where the time st is between say this value 15 minutes ago and, and now I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Order by time ST sending. All right. 
Anyway, let's look at the generated SQL. Okay, so where time between this number and that number. And when I change these time filter here, we can see those numbers change. Three hours, we can see the numbers have changed. Go back down to say 30 minutes. We only want a small result set for now. Okay, so the next problem we here have here is it says value column must have a numeric data type. To fix that, you can just do this cast variable name value as signed as value. Now signed means it's a positive or negative number. If you want just positive numbers, you can just write unsigned like so. I'm gonna leave it signed. Now let's try that again. Let's run the uh, query inspector on that. And we can see now that we have, we're now we're pulling data from the MySQL database here. We've, we're getting a lot of data. We don't need all of that. And if we look at the response results set here, comes through as a, as a series, A, that's A, comes through as a series, 448 rows, up time, it's like 448 different columns coming through. We don't need all those, it's, it's really too much information for one graph. Let's reduce that to being just one thing, and that thing I want is a thing called threads running. So I'll find that somewhere. It's quite hard to see the type. There we go, there's threads running. That's with a D. I just want threads running without the D. So anyway, to return just the threads running column, I can say where time filter time stamp and variable name equals threads running. Okay, so let's try that again in the query inspector. Okay, so we now get one, one column of data. Threads running and we have in that last 30 minutes we have three values coming through. And to see what happens if we change these uh, time filter here, we can see about three values now. Let's change that to say one hour. Go back to the query inspector. We can see we have six points now in our time series result. Got that for three hours. Series object 18. Okay, so every 10 minutes this event schedule is essentially running show global status and putting that data into the my two status table so that we can retrieve it. Okay, so we have we just close that now and look again what we've got. So we've just written this here to pull data from the my two status table. Now this is written in a format. This is an SQL format that Grafana understands. We can actually view the generated SQL down here and actually copy and paste that and run that directly on MySQL ourselves if we wanna say debug further on my Grafana server here where I have MySQL, I can just paste that that generated SQL, put in a semicolon at the end, and there we go. That's the same result set that Grafana is using to create this graph right now. There we go. Well, that's basically how to write a custom MySQL time series query.